My name is Margaret Boateng Sechre. Um, Powerhouse Ministries International was introduced to me by a classmate of mine, of course, Pastor Bernard is our classmate. Um, this classmate talked passionately about Powerhouse, um, and we always talked about the possibility of joining a charismatic church because we've always been with the Orthodox churches. Um, she brought me to the Easter concert in 2019, and I was just blown away. Blown away um, because the performances were just amazing. Um, and I just felt that closeness, people being just regular. And that's what I liked about fellowshipping, being there and, and not feeling special, just another person in the room, like all the other people. But everybody there felt special in their own way and was very welcoming to be part of Powerhouse Ministries International. And then I got stuck. I would drive all the way from Lashibi every Sunday when I could and when I was in town to be there. And that's how I, I managed to, to be part of, of this beautiful congregation. Um, for me, it's mostly um, how well the word is taught. You know, I've always, I've loved the Bible because I took Bible knowledge to all level and I've known it from, as a storybook, you know, but to understand that side of it through faith and to be able to understand what it stands for in our lives and the tenets of the Bible, you know, which is what the pastors at PMI share, teach when we come. And what I also love about fellowshipping and being there is, is how nobody ever hustles us for money. It's the singular thing that I talk about to everybody. I said, there is no push to contribute. You do it out of your own free will, knowing that you've come there with your burden and you have that private moment with God. Um, and when you're going, you do whatever you can to just say thank you. And that thank you is from your heart. And it's such a beautiful experience to be part of that family. Oh, there's, there's one thing about Powerhouse and its future. What I also really loved about it is the youth. It's got a very young congregation. Yes, there are older people like us and lots of other older people who are affiliated. Um, but it's the youth and the attention to what the youth need and bringing them along. Um, there was an opportunity and it's still an opportunity to, to talk to the youth. Just give them that open forum to ask us who've walked this earth much longer than they have, had certain experiences that they haven't seen. There are lots of questions on the minds of the youth and we had a beautiful opportunity to set up just a conversation once a month when it's possible to hear the youth. They ask every and any question. There's no barrier. And we, the experienced adults, are able to share our experiences and to guide them and help them. Those of us who don't have the answers, we bring those um, other colleagues in to share the story. And that's one singular experience that I just love about Powerhouse. The fact that the youth feel empowered, they're part of the family, and we're able to just be with them, share whatever we, we can with them in a very passionate way. And there's trust. Um, you know, it's, it's your 25th anniversary, you know, um, never too late to join. Um, I came in, I've been there, what, a year and a little bit, but I feel like I've been part of this forever. Um, I'm praying that we're able to touch more lives, bring more people in. And even if, um, and also, most importantly, those who are there, to be able to benefit from all the, the amazing things that we're thinking about. Education being one of the biggest things that um, the leadership of Powerhouse is very strong on. Um, and to grow the skills of the youth so that each one of them feel empowered to be who they are.
Alfred Ankara. I've been a member of Powerhouse for more than 20 years, although I've been traveling in and out of the country. Um, I was here since I was a medical student. I've been having a wonderful time in Powerhouse. The Word of God has been awesome. Groove has been awesome. We have the opportunity to work with a man of God who's so excited, who teaches us how to love the Lord, how to develop a personal relation with the Lord. And it's just off the chains. I decided to stay in Powerhouse because of the kind of leadership the church provided, the way the church offered practical solutions to life daily challenges, the way the church challenged me to continue in my Christian worship, in my prayer, in my word study, despite challenges, circumstances that go on. The pastor has been very instrumental. And yes, generally there we have a loving church, a church where you belong. It doesn't matter where you are. As a medical student, I fitted in very well when I finished school and I was working as a medical officer. I fitted very well when I came back and I was working as a consultant. I mean, you always feel at home in powerhouse. And so that really influenced my decision to stay. What sets PMI apart, I think, is the interpersonal relationship that we have that you're able to approach other people approach leadership whenever you have any challenges but more especially in your ability to grow despite challenges that really come I think that is what really sets up our part H2O that is the feeding program that we do after every service and this is a program that we designed for people in the community and people around to come to have a meal after every service. It's been very instrumental. You can see that it's really helped the people in the community. You see people coming in. At the end of the day, they have a smile on their face. They come in. You realize that they feel at home. It's been one particular social intervention that we really have seen a big difference. Um, uh, being involved in the Bible school, um, well, that is not my achievement per se, but I've been involved in it and I've seen a lot of young people coming through, people zealous to serve the Lord. It's offered very practical solutions, particularly when there are times in my life where things have been very difficult, very challenging. I really don't know where to turn to and the teachers in Powerhouse have kept me going, kept me moving forward, kept me just believing God and causing me to even grow deeper in my relation with God, even sometimes, I mean, you know, generally people will draw closer to God in challenging situations, but in Powerhouse, you are always challenged to develop a closer relation with God, even when it seems things are fine with you. So that has really, really been the major impact and influenced me to draw closer to God and be very practical in terms of my service delivery in my work. What I see the future of Powerhouse to be, I see Powerhouse expanding, Powerhouse affecting and implementing lives. A lot of young people are coming through. We see them growing, we see them doing so many things. So I see Powerhouse expanding, branches coming all around, and people practically in this community, lives being really affected. Young people come to know the Lord, older people also coming to the Lord. Everyone having a place and a place to serve God in the house of God. I want to say, a happy anniversary to every Powerhouse member and assure them that God has greater things in store for us. So keep on keeping on. There are better days ahead. God has definitely got something great to do with us. We ain't seen anything yet. I'm a friend and a supporter of Powerhouse. Pastor Bernard is a classmate and a good friend and I've been quite, uh, should I say, impressed by the vision of the church and that has led me to be a, a supporter of the ministry of Powerhouse. So in terms of experiences, um, uh, just about almost a couple of years ago, my brother fell ill and he was admitted in Kolibu for quite a few sessions. He had cancer. And I mentioned to Pastor Bernard about it, and there was one particular instance when he needed a blood transfusion. And as you know, in Ghana, sometimes this can be pretty tricky. There was a shortage, and you know. And I discovered that Powerhouse was a registered blood donor in Kolebu, and so they could, uh, they had some, uh, should I say, ability to provide blood. And that, that was a big help. And it was also Pastor coming over to pray with him. And unknown to me, he came one day um, just as I was also coming to visit, and I heard he had been there a number of times. So 
that, that was something that touched me quite a bit. Um, my brother didn't know him, but he just went in and looked for him and went in to pray with him a number of times. So that was particularly touching. You know, at those times, you are really sort of uh, quite stressed and, and drawn out, and that's something I, I still treasure very much. Well, the other thing is the music. Um, I really enjoy and I'm touched by the ministry, the music ministry of the church. Um, it's one of the things I look forward to every time there's a program, you know. Um, sometimes it's a bit difficult to keep your eyes from tearing up. <laughs> but it's great. I, I, really, I really am blessed by the music ministry. So um, one of the things that particularly touched me about Powerhouse was the vision for the community. And when Pastor shared why he had located the church where he did and his passion for the people, in fact, that's one of the things you don't find very much in churches today. Um, you know, there's a tendency to focus on bringing the well-healed to line the, the, the treasury of the church, but this is where you see a church which is more reaching out to the people, not just to bring them to Christ, but also to lift their horizons to to empower them to see what they could do and be. So in that sense, I see the future of Powerhouse as transformational. I mean, I'm looking forward to see what's the impact on those who have been taken through school, who have been given a bigger sense of what they can do with the power of Christ in them, reaching out to their communities when they themselves also become empowered. And I guess the sky is the limit. What God has in, in store for the community and for the church as a whole. Um, I don't try to imagine it, but I believe it will be something glorious. On your 25th anniversary, I just thank God for Pastor Bernard and for the ministry team, for all the members who have supported, because a minister on his own can do so much. It's the support of his ministry team, of his congregation. I just love the relationship that he has with his church members. You know, he's not up there and they are somewhere else. Um, there's a true bond of fellowship there, and I wish you all the very best that God would continue to bless the church and bless the membership and bless the fellowship that you have together. Um, I know it's been a great thing for the year group at Shimota 1980. It's our sort of family church. We come there every so often, and I'm sure we'll have many good times together. So I pray God's blessing on Powerhouse Ministries. The Aqua family across from here to Osunyaniba Estate, and I was very, very, very close to all of them, and that is how my association with Powerhouse started with Bishop Bernard. I knew Powerhouse in the past from its humble beginnings at the school compound, and I could tell that the seeds that were being sown at that time, the commitment to the word of God, the vision of evangelism, the vision of training and grooming leaders, the vision of worship, the vision of community involvement. Even from those early days, one could tell that this ministry was destined for greater things. And I could also watch how the seeds that were sown have now germinated and become a mighty oak tree. For the present, I see the same commitment to the vision and the goals. There has been no departure from them. And under the strong leadership of Bernard, I can see powerhouse having great impact upon not only Kolebu, Kolegono, Choko, Mamprovi, Dansuman areas, but indeed in the whole of Accra and Ghana as a nation. Powerhouse has grown to become a true powerhouse in the Christian landscape, according to its name. And I can see it fulfilling its destiny. I can see it fulfilling the goals for which it was set up. I can see, as I said earlier on, 
that this is not a one-man ministry. We are not building a personality called here. So you tend to hear more of Powerhouse than of Bishop Bernard. He's not raising himself up above everything else. I can see that whatever Powerhouse is doing in the present is to bring glory and honor to God. And I can see team building. I can see working together with the whole body of Powerhouse, the members, the leaders, the pastors, and the bishop. All of them with their hands on the plow, working to achieve the results that they have achieved as of now. I can see that underlining all that they are doing is a desire that Christ should increase and everybody else should decrease. And so in a quiet, effective way, they are just spreading the gospel. They are just training people, grooming people maturing and mentoring people to take their place not just in the ministry but in the body of Christ at large. I can see increase. I can see growth. I can see flourishing and expansion. And above all, I can see a greater impact of the ministry upon the lives of people, transforming their lives and making them not just born again, but people who are living by the standards of the Bible, living right, holy, righteous living. I can see a future that can only bring glory and honor to God. And I'm very proud to have been associated with Powerhouse in this manner. As we celebrate our 25th anniversary, I say to you, Bishop Bernard, the entire leadership of Powerhouse, the members of Powerhouse, and all those dearly beloved ones who are associated with powerhouse, that may you grow from strength to strength. I say may your eyes never dim. May you stay focused on the vision God has given you. And may the Lord continue to use your ministry to impact many people and bring them from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light and groom them to the fullness of the stature of Christ. At this time, Bishop and the family of Powerhouse, I salute you. I actually met Reverend Bernard Adeyakwa. I often call him Pastor B. I met him while I was fighting with my mechanic and he was there to settle the whole issue and I don't think meeting him was a coincidence I think it was God's doing and since then he's been my man he's been there for me and I'm happy to be part of their celebration actually PMI I've been with them for about 15 years and it's not just like um, just being with them every step of the way when I say being with them is every step of the way and Pastor Bernard and his wife they have been amazing it, there has been times when one is very very down and they are there to support you sometimes you are even I, sometimes I tell Pastor Bernard, Osofo, I call him Osofo. Osofo, mbeno kwe, he says, Afrida, come on, pesem, wajamo. Then we just share it out. So he's not just a pastor, he's a friend, he's a brother, and he's, he's a father as well. And I remember one time I fell ill five years ago in Kolibu, and I was surprised to see him there with his wife. In fact, they actually brought me alive because I was dying. Words alone, the words of encouragement to keep alive was amazing. And in fact, I'm so, so grateful. He's not just a pastor. I think he's the God-choosing man. Because for a church to be in Kolegono, it's not easy. You can imagine the amount of children who come here who have nothing and want to be supported, the kind of people who want to, he has to take to school. And most of the time, they are here to find something to eat. And I'm not sure it's easy for him. 
It's only people who have been chosen by God who can go through things like this. And we praise God for him. And for 25 years, he's been doing this. And we say, thank God, because if this is how God wants to build his church through people like him, then more grace to his elbows. Because for 25 years to come again, we want to have a multitude of congregation. A multitude that he can feed with five loaves of bread and two fish. Because that's what God wants. He has the love for children. He has the love for, you can imagine, not just children, but for humanity. Because what he's doing is not just for him. He's not after the money. Because if it was money, I'm sure he would put up the church somewhere else. Why Choco? He's here to help humanity. And that's what he's doing. We thank God and we are grateful that they have come all this way. 25 years. You can imagine if you have a child and it's now 25 years old. Then the child is almost getting married. So for 25 years, we say, Osofo, well done. Well done. God bless you and your wife. Continue to do the good works and he will put you on the highest pedestal. He knows what to do for his people and thank you so much. Happy, happy, happy anniversary. May God bless your entire generation and the team that you work with. We say thank you to all of them. Enjoy your anniversary and have a very, very pleasant celebration. Um, Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Kwabna Ansa. Um, I'm the Senior Associate Pastor of Covenant Family Community Church, also the Convener, Executive Director of Kingdom Equip Network, and also former General Secretary of the National Association of Charismatic and Christian Churches. And directly connected to Reverend Bernard, um, I used to be the President of Laboni Cantonment Christian Fellowship. Pastor Bernard has been known to me since we were primary school classmates, uh, as far back as 1974, 1975. We wrote common entrance together. He decided to remain in Accra and go to Achimoto School. I chose to go to the school, the Vansom School, and, um, of which we were connected, reconnected again around uh, the 80s when uh, he came to join us at the Laboni Cantonment Christian Fellowship. And uh, he came with Bishop Adi, the current Bishop Adi, and other brethren. Uh, he came out as a brother who was very, very zealous, who, especially for souls. He was also one of our worship and praise leaders. And uh, he really brought a lot of energy to the fellowship. And he was also very uh, generous, compassionate and generous, so much into helping people, supporting uh, brethren, supporting the weak, and uh, giving especially when he started work at Unilever in those days. And he could endure a lot of uh, um, um, uh, struggle because traveling to Tema day and night and through the traffic and all of that, he would still make it to meetings, prayer meetings and other gatherings. He didn't forsake the, the fellowship of the brethren. Uh, we, we have been in touch. He preaches in our church uh, every, every, any time is possible. And I have had the opportunity to be, visit his church a number of times. And I say to the glory of God that, uh, Pastor Bernard and his wife, um, Cynthia, we, I call her Mansa, uh, she, they've been doing such a great job. Recently, I was there in uh, Mamprobi, Tuesday Market, where their church is located, and I just thank the Lord for their lives, uh, because it's such a passion for, the, for people, especially young people that are trying to find their way back into life. And I was so moved and when they were involved with the food distribution. They, they, they really love the people. They have the, a heart for the people. They don't just win souls and uh, make sure that uh, they are established in the things of Christ, but they, they help them with their education. They help them with their business. They help them with set up jobs and so many things. They are so involved with the people. They really want to bury Christ in 
into the lives of the community. And they, they, theirs is more, more, than, more than just a personality thing. It's a community trans transformational ministry. And I'm so, I was so challenged when I saw what God has been using them to do these uh, 25 years or so. I can't thank God enough for all the, the commitment, the passion. And the truth of the matter also is that in spite of all the knowledge and experience and exposure that Pastor Bernard and his wife um, have acquired, um, there's also still that fundamental belief in, in commitment to Christ. They, they just love the Lord. They want to, uh, everybody to have that personal experience. And it's not so much about the flamboyance. You, I could see from reading from his heart that, uh, that worldly goods have very little value to them, but wanting to be a blessing to those that are deprived and those that are lost in Christ uh, is still very central to their lives. And I was so, uh, so excited to, to fellowship with them. So I, I just want to thank God for Pastor Bernard, uh, his wife uh, Cynthia Mansa, and all the fellowship, uh, the church brethren at the Powerhouse uh, Church, that you're doing such a great job, and God will continue to, I pray for you all, that God will continue to bless you and establish you. I pray that God will open new frontiers for you, not only in Tuesday Market, uh, beyond Choco, but there are other parts of the nation and other parts of the world that need this kind of love, this kind of sincerity, this kind of passion for the lost and passion for, the, for Christ. And I pray that their dreams will be fulfilled. Whatever they have touched in these 25 years, the Lord will cause it to be fruitful. And what they are yet to touch, I pray that the Lord will cause it to also increase. May it transcend to their generations as they continue this great work. God bless you, my brethren at Powerhouse. God bless you, Pastor Bernard. God bless you, Sister Cynthia Mansa, otherwise known as Let There Be Love. Hallelujah. What a glorious morning. We thank God for a day like this. I want to welcome you to a celebration of honor. Today, we gather in our homes, joining our hearts together, and bringing our substance to honor our God for 25 years of empowering lives and offering practical solutions. Today's service promises to be spectacular, and I believe that it will be very refreshing for all of us. Stay tuned, share the link, call a friend, call a family member. Let's gather together and let's bring honor to our God. He's been great. He's been good to us. He's graced us with 25 years. Glory to the Most High King. Father, this morning we gather together with a grateful heart. Thank you for 25 years. We honor you in this place. We ask that 
all glory is ascribed to you. Glorify yourself through us today. And at the end of the day, let hearts be drawn closer to you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen.
Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Power and many blessings to you. Powerhouse Ministries International PMI this year, by the grace of God, celebrates a quarter of a century. 25 years of empowering lives and offering practical solutions to day, life's daily challenges. The Chronicles of PMI date to 1995 in the Ligon Gardens, where a few ardent Christians led by Reverend Bernard Adiakwa prayed with great favor to start what is now a thriving church with influence across the globe. Church services began at the University of Ghana Legon campus with three members through to the Ndafa Park, Kolibu Doctors' Canteen, Social Welfare, the Collegon on One School Classroom, and finally to the Kings Temple. These annals are being put into a documentary and coming out soon. We crave your indulgence to watch when it is released. PMI's vision is to be a cutting-edge ministry with a worldwide reach, instilling godliness and excellence. Our mission is to empower lives for the spiritual, social, and physical development and improvement in the quality of life of the individual and the communities in which we operate, making an impact. Our mission strategy has been and still is simple bring them in build them up train them and send them out on missions to expand the kingdom of god and magnify the name of our lord over the past 25 years our development focus has driven us towards interventionist policies and programs that offer practical solutions and lifelines to our members and the communities to achieve our spiritual, social, and physical development mandate. One, the Maximum Impact. Our annual epic event, Maximum Impact, which comes off in August and lines up some of the finest men of God, including Dr. Mensah Otabel, the main speaker for over a decade, has gained currency over the years. The convention has seen phenomenal growth with hundreds and thousands connect with us to experience the move of God. Two, Rima Word. The General Overseer's Media Brokers, Rima Word, is transmitted over the airwaves by CTFM every Sunday. Make a point to listen. This has been a life changing experience for many listeners who attest to it with testimonies. And with the advent of COVID-19, we now stream live on the internet. Third, the Shepherd Summit. It's a monthly college for leadership training to ensure that many critical areas in ministry and leadership are covered in time. This college also enrolls external students from other churches. Fourth, our Marriage Ministry Network International, for short, MMNI. It's our marriage and family outreach that works at strengthening relationships and family ties in the church and the communities. The fifth is the Total Woman. The Total Woman Seminar, set in the month of May, provides teachings on the female to function as she has been made to, as a woman who fears God, a wife, a housemaker, a homemaker, and a mother. This runs throughout the whole of the month. The sixth is the Manpower 360. It's a conference that targets the mills and is set for the whole month of June. As a training for the men to be change agents in their communities and fathers of their homes to raise the next generation in a godly manner. Seventh, the Empower Fund, formerly the Education Fund, is an education portfolio which supports brilliantly but needy students, especially at the tertiary level. This scholarship has changed the profile of our church membership as currently over 80% of the youth in PMI who have gone tertiary level in their education and this empowers them to, uh, to compete in the job market. Eighth Meal for Life. It's an annual outreach to feed hundreds each year 
offering a lifeline to many from deprived locations. Nine, our health fair. This extends health services to those in need and also supports the National Blood Bank. Tenth, our Read for Life program. This is a literacy drive to improve reading and writing skills of children at the JSS level, including computer development. Eleven, our Samaritan Pairs. It's an outreach program to support non-church members with vital medication, food, clothing, and essential supplies. Twelve, KITS, our KITS in Divine Service program. This program reaches out to children in need, feeding and clothing them, and providing them with logistics and mentorship for their basic education. Thirteen, our Women Empowerment. This empowers enterprising women with resources to be economically self-reliant. In this endeavor, we provide the minimum capital required and equipment where needed for startups for small and medium-scale businesses. Fourteen, our mentorship program. This assists the youth in their career path development. Fifteen, that's our Monarchs University College. This plans for this plans are far advanced for our university college to become operational. Our emphasis will be on the programs that offer technical and vocational skills to students. This will be the first university in Choco. I believe at this point you have to shout hallelujah, praising the Lord. Amen. 16th, which is the very novel program that we are just introduced in church. It's called the Hunger and Health Outreach for short H2O. It's a strategic evangelistic outreach program to bring people to the kingdom of God by addressing issues of hunger and health apart from the preaching of the word. And that this outreach strategy, new needy souls who attend church on Sundays are fed a balanced meal and provided with medical care. Our current focus is to one, institute a succession strategy and structure to implement a growth and development drive over the next five-year period and three provide digital leadership pmi deeply appreciate those who have been with us from the beginning those who joined us along the way and those who are now joining us physically and online we thank you for the commitment of your time your energies your finances and all other resources that God has endowed you with. We also thank those who from afar have dedicated their support in various forms to help us through this momentous journey. Now the future is bright with a godly excitement as we launch into another era in the life of PMI. Come and have this victorious ride with us. God wish you blessings. My name is Dr. Andrew Ade Akwa, and as my name suggests, Pastor Bernard is family. Pastor Bernard is my brother, and together in a family of nine children, we are very happy on this joyous occasion to celebrate PMI at 25 years. For us, we are so proud that one of us can turn out after a sound and healthy youth and education and training and preparation to serve the Lord and to serve our generation. He may be one of the youngest, but he matches the present youthful generation and population that we have in our country, and we are so happy. The whole family has been associated with PMI right from its beginning. Even my father was part of the PMI congregation, and he might have been the oldest, but the whole family consistently attends all the major functions of PMI. 
We are proud of Pastor Bernard. We are proud of the work that is being done in this country, in this part of Accra, right on the ground in a community of Accra, which needed to hear the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves to move with the young people. He loves to identify with them. We are very happy. If you have come across a poster which says, if you can read this, thank a teacher, I would suggest another poster or t-shirt writing which says, if you love the Lord Jesus, thank a servant of the Lord. Pastor Bernard is an exceptional person. Right after finishing his university course, he chose to serve the Lord in the midst of inviting opportunities. Today, in the darkness of our present generation, Pastor Bernard is like a star. The Bible speaks about people who are stars. They will turn many unto righteousness. They will turn many in their generation to find God and to know the grace of God. We all know him as a servant, as a slave of God in the ministry of the gospel. But to all the people who attend PMI functions or belong to PMI, he's a star telling people this is the way to eternal life. This is the way to purpose. This is the way to make full use of the gift of God's giving life. On this occasion of the 25 years, which stands for a silver celebration, we thank God. 25 years is a silver celebration. And silver in the Bible signifies the redemptive work of Christ. We wish PMI will be an epitome of God's grace, bringing salvation through the redemptive work of Christ to many, especially to the young people. We wish all the young people in and around this area and the many lives which are touched through the airwaves and through the various functions and opportunities he has to speak will be brought to taste the saving grace of Christ. We wish its impact to be multiplied upon coming generations. We wish an outstanding legacy. We wish something to be left that will outlast him. We wish something to be left that will impact successive generations. PMI, 25 years, we salute you heartily. We wish PMI a future. We wish PMI to be an intergenerational work. We wish Pastor Bernard God's protection. We wish God's grace upon him to be faithful. We want him to continue and execute the mandates given to him all the way to the end. We wish him a lot of health. We back him as a family. We are united with him. Our prayers are with him. Our support is totally behind him. And we offer him again to our most gracious God, to a God who showed mercy to him to touch him so young, to use him to bless many and touch them so young. Pastor Bernard, we greet you. We salute you. We rejoice with you. Go on to the end. Let God's mercy upon you be multiplied in Jesus' name. Here, my God bless you. All the stakeholders, God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Kingdom greetings to Powerhouse. Um, uh, I want to thank God for the life of Pastor Bernard and Pastor Mansa. Amazingly, we got to connect it very strongly when we lost a, a, a mutual friend, Apostle Joseph Chaponu. But after Apostle Chaponu passed on, I and Pastor Mansa, Pastor Bernard became very close. On the 25th of your church anniversary, I want to really encourage and speak to you for the great work you have done. I have come to Powerhouse several times. And I am amazed about the kind of work you are doing in that part of the city. I always say that you have a special calling for that community. Some of us are not called there, but we can support. And I want to wish you God's blessings, God's favor, and God's grace. I want you to know that you have labored faithfully in the vineyard. And God will reward you. You've just been who you are. you stood for who you are. you stood in integrity, in simplicity, and in leadership. So we bless God for your life, for Powerhouse, how far you've raised Powerhouse. And the coming years of Powerhouse are going to be glorious years. Because I believe that the next 25 years are going to be years of rest, years of fulfillment. There are dreams that you've always had for yourself and for your ministry and for your family. I believe in the next 25 years you'll see those things happen for you. So on this special occasion of your 25th anniversary, I wish you God's blessings. I wish you God's grace. I prophesy over your life, Deuteronomy chapter 
1 verse 11. May God make you a thousand times more. May a thousand times more anointing rest on you. May you possess the land that God has given you. God bless you and I love you all.
I want to shift a little bit. I have a, I have a guest here that I would like to bring up to share right now. Um, I want you to just, she's going to bless us in a mighty way right now. I want you to welcome to the stage, Shayna Wilson Williams. All right.
your love is kind your love is patient oh you feel my heart hey you make my life feel brand new oh cause you're all
Lord. Lift up your voice. Give him all the praise. Come on, somebody in your home, wherever you are, give him praise. Give him praise for watching over us all these years in the valleys, on the mountains, everywhere we went. Our God was with us. He walked with us. He talked with us. He taught us. He lifted us up. We want to say that we celebrate him forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to stand and sing this hymn together and say thank you to God for all his goodness. And if in your homes, please sing along. The lyrics are on the screen. Sing along with us. Now thank we all our God. We give you all the glory. Let's all go together. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things hath done in whom this world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is us today hallelujah it's still ours today yes lord Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in His grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next hallelujah thank you lord for all that you've done we give you all the glory come on with a, a stronger tone Oh, praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given. The Son and Him who reigns, heaven, the one eternal God. Whom heaven and earth adore, for thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore. Let's sing this part. For thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore hallelujah amen you may be seated hallelujah it is now time for us to celebrate the lord with our offerings we want to honor the lord with our substance and want to take our first offering and we remember that offerings are a sacred and cardinal part of our faith. Remember that Jesus Christ is an offering from God. And the shed blood we plead over our lives, which speaks better things for us, is the result of an offering. When offerings are given willingly, cheerfully, and sacrificially, they provoke divine grace and help. This morning, I encourage you wherever you are.
to give to God generously. You want to give your first offering. You want to send your offerings to PMI mobile money accounts displayed on your screen. Let's just lift up our offerings and let's pray over them this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for these offerings that we bring to honor your name, O God. We pray that may our offerings be acceptable in your sight. Rebuke the devour for our sakes. Open a new chapter for PMI and for your people and lead us forth. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Wherever you are, welcome again to our 25th anniversary service. God bless you. And as our customers, we would like to declare the words of faith over our lives. Wherever you are, in your homes, in your offices, in your car, you want to join us as we declare God's words to us this morning. So I want to encourage you to stand to your feet as we declare the words that have taken us from the beginning and the words that will take us into our future. Wherever you are, you want to join us as we say together. Our Heavenly Father, creator of the heavens and the earth, the Alpha and Omega, hallowed be your name. Truly you are indescribable, more precious and valuable than anything we can ever imagine. We are blessed and honored to have you as Lord and also to be called your own inheritance, a chosen generation called to show forth your praises. Out of a deep sense of gratitude and conviction in my heart, I commit to love you and to seek you earnestly with all my heart, to faithfully and diligently serve your kingdom, to speak and do the word. I receive and believe your word to me with all my heart, for with my God, all things are possible, and I boldly declare, I am a chosen generation called out of darkness into your marvelous light to show forth your excellence. I am special, selected, handpicked, and set apart for your divine purpose. I am blessed and endowed with divine wisdom to provide uncommon and outstanding leadership. I am the delight of kings and nobles. My impact and influence is generational and significant. Even in strange and foreign lands, when I speak, all creation hears me. I am for signs and wonders. Like a city on a hill, I cannot be hid. My light has broken forth suddenly, and my influence is a sweet fragrance all over the earth. Divine prosperity is my portion. You lead me forth with silver and gold, and my bands are filled with abundance. I am blessed all over and everywhere. You feed me with the heritage of Jacob and make me great and honorable. You spread a cloud to cover me and fire to give light in the night for my divine protection. You suffer no man to do me wrong and reprove kings for my sake. Even in the wilderness, you satisfy me with the bread of heaven and water by your divine provision. You fill my life and house with shouts of joy and gladness. All the days of my life, and give me an inheritance beyond my natural abilities and efforts. Father, I thank you for choosing me and blessing me with your word. Beyond my human efforts and abilities, beyond my limitations and inadequacies, I receive your word with all my heart. Lord, let it be done unto me according to thy word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. This morning, my mission here is to give to the shepherd of this house to let the shepherd of this house know what and how we feel about him. For 25 years, this man has been with us. He started it all. He started it when no one was with him. He started it 
when no one believed in him. He started it when it was like the grain of a mustard seed. Very little. And I remember 25 years ago. 25 years ago, who would have come along with us? But Pastor Bernard started it. He started it. He had a vision. He knew where he wanted to go. And he brought us all along with him. And in listening to him and in being at his feet for these 25 years, especially during this COVID era, I realized that we have had a great man and we have a great man in our midst. Because listening to him and listening to his teachings, such as teachings on wisdom, the heart of a true worshiper, when he tells us that the worship is not done here, when no one is watching you and you are in your room alone by yourself and you can worship and you can kneel down, that's when you are given true worship. The different kinds of shepherds that he teaches us or he's been teaching us. He's taught us on giving. He's also taught us on behaving ourselves wisely in the palace. And during the lockdown, when I put all those things into perspective, I realized that the chickens have really come to roost. That was the time when your faith, our faith, was put to the test. When you, by yourself, could read the Bible on your own, or you yourself could understand that this is what the man of God has been driving at. So this morning, as I, my mission here is to tell the man, our shepherd, to sing a song to him, to make him realize that he's important. We acknowledge him as the one who has led us to this point for 25 years. And we acknowledge him as a great man indeed. So to Pastor Bernard, we sing an ode to our shepherd. An ode. For 25 years, you have labored. You brought us in. You taught us the will of the Father. You sent us out as Christ sent his disciples. You covered us with your love. A love manifested diversely. A love that was present in our uncertainties, aspirations, joys, griefs, achievements, and hopes, asking for nothing in return. For these and many more, you deserve our highest praise. Amen.
worship you.
Happy anniversary to Powerhouse. 25 years of power, of God's grace, of God's mercy, of God's goodness. And my heartiest congratulations to you, Pastor Bernard, and uh, your wife, Pastor Mansa, and the whole team uh, who stand with you, pastors, men and women of God, who have stood faithful with you all through these years. You have chosen a very hard ground, a very difficult place to plow for the Lord and to create a vineyard for him. And, and God has helped you in the hard place, in a difficult place where most people would not plow, you have plowed. And see the results in the lives of the transformed people that God has raised all around you. Uh, for me, uh, I have seen the transformation of Powerhouse all these years. I came when the church was a small congregation, didn't have a nice meeting place, and I've seen every year improvement, advancement, quality, excellence. In a place where the surroundings seem depressing, you have built an edifice of excellence and a people who have become models of excellence, cities set on a hill, a light of God that is not under a bushel. And your life and ministry makes all of us fully appreciate the transforming power of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And these 25 years have been laborers, but the fruit is there to see in the lives that have been transformed. And we trust God that he who has brought you these 25 years is going to take you the next 25 years, by which time you'll be an old man and an old woman, but uh, the church of Jesus Christ will be ever young and ever strong, still plowing for the Lord Jesus Christ. You make us proud. You honor the name of the Lord. You have remained faithful. May the Lord expand your coast and may the Lord cause the days ahead to be like the days of the heavens above. May God bless you, increase you, and abound in grace towards you in all good things. In Jesus' name, amen. It is good to be in the house of God. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for making it possible for us to gather this morning in a COVID season and still celebrate the goodness of the Lord for 25 years. It is God's grace and mercy that has guided us through. I'm grateful to the Lord God Almighty for his great mercy in picking me up, a sinner like me, and choosing me and making me a vessel to use in a place like this. I want to say a great thank you to all the human vessels God has used to bless and help us on our journey. I want to salute Pastor Mansa, my wife who has stood with me all these 25 years, 25 years of carrying a vision behind the scenes and for your support. Amazing, amazing your work in the choir. You are not a typical first lady of a church. You are, your hands are sold every day with the work that you do and, and I really salute you. I want to say thank you to my children also who have borne um, our, our sacrifices in silence and continue to do so. I, I want to salute Reverend Oscar and Sandra, uh, Fiba, Mercy, especially the board members, Anita, um, and all of you who labor. You are the real heroes, Pastor Bo and Rini and Co. You are the real heroes who make this possible. Many times when you talk about a church, people may refer to the pastor. But who is the pastor without the people who labor day and night, who survive and, 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 and go through the challenges of the seasons? You pay your tithe and make it possible to keep the church running. And you are a reason why the church is here, still here, after 25 years. And so wherever you are, all over the world, wherever you support us, I give you a salute this morning. And I say, God bless you. And though our beginnings may be small, yet our latter end shall be greatly increased. Our story this morning, I want to share a little bit about some of the things that have influenced and guided us in our transitions on this journey of life. PMI is a church, and I'm sure um, 25 years ago, if you want to know how we were like, just subtract 25 years from your age. And, and look at yourself and see how far the Lord has brought you 
it will give you an idea of what we were also like when we were just a little mustard seed quite insignificant despicable not attractive to many people but still the grace of god has been upon us our story is a story of faith in god faithfulness to god and a heart of thanksgiving to our god and this morning that is what i'm going to share a few things that will guide you in your life's journey oftentimes we read success stories and great accomplishment of our heroes and heroines and wish to be like them but sometimes we exclude ourselves from significant achievements because we think we lack the right credentials and the opportunity what kind of person is God looking for to use what qualification is he looking for in someone is it the intellect is it his ability to read is it his fame is can God use somebody who by nature is a bit shy and bashful does the person have to be talented and have money be that must he be popular or handsome or beautiful the answer to all these questions is clearly no God can and God does use the most unexpected people he picks the foolish things of this world the base and ignoble to confound the wise I have looked over our journey and I'm just picking three things that have helped us on our journey the first is what I call faith in God which deals with our relationship with God the second the second thing has to do with our faithfulness to God which has to do with our life of service and the third is a grateful heart which has to do with our thanksgiving to God so most of the people you see who seem to have done well have a cocktail of these three ingredients number one faith in God number two faithfulness to God and number three a heart of gratitude it is important you understand all these things the first is faith in God and I want you to turn your Bible to the book of Mark chapter 11 and look at verse 22 and Jesus answering said unto them have faith in God have faith in God what did we start with how did we start the only thing we had was faith in God now I know that it's easy for a lot of people to have faith they have faith in their education they have faith in their buildings they have faith in the number of people who attend their services they have faith in the quality of the people or the class of people who attend their service fortunately or unfortunately powerhouse started like a children's ministry we had nobody who was educated per se we had very young people my oldest son was around four years then and he was one of the early founders of the church most of the people just came from the streets and were very few in number and so we learned quickly to take our faith from natural things and place our faith in God Jesus answering said unto them have faith in God as you go through life's journey one of the things I want to be the anchor of your life is to have faith in God have faith in a God beyond even yourself and your abilities when the church was about to start one of the questions I looked I asked myself was do I feel adequate enough and that sense of inadequacy will grip me and many times I was hesitant even to step out but I had faith in a God who was bigger than my inadequacies I had faith in a God who was bigger than my limitations and so today I want to say to all of you have faith in God it takes faith in God to do great things it takes faith in God to step out and start a business it takes faith in God to step out and start a marriage for with God all things are possible we have faith in God who makes all things possible I have faith in a God who is the creator and the God who calls things that be not as though they are I have faith in a God who quickeneth the dead and even when things are dead and men give up on it and say it is no good I have faith in a God who can use the dead and raise the dead I have faith in a God who's bigger than the devil sometimes as you go through life's journey you you have to face giants and sometimes because of the giants you see like Goliath you pull back and refuse to step out in faith but I believe in a God who's bigger than the devil I believe in a God who's bigger than the storms I believe in a God who's stronger than any Goliath 
I have faith in a God who's bigger than my background. I have faith in a God who's bigger than my environment. I have faith in a God who's bigger than sickness. I have faith in a God who's bigger than any person. I have faith in a God who's bigger than any creation or army or country or government. What type of God you serve will determine your boldness to step out. Do you see God bigger than the challenges you face? Then you don't need to fear. So we have to see God and have faith in God. That even though our beginnings were small, our faith in God, even though we're facing challenging circumstances, even though we had hostile relationships around, we believed in a God who was bigger. Today, I dare you to believe in a God who is bigger. Bigger than your background. The story of PMI illustrates the story of a, God, a faith in a God who is bigger than what you can imagine. Who is able to do exceeding abundantly above what you think of or ask. And that though you may be born in a background, that seems to give you no hope. God is bigger than your background. Have faith in God. Now faith has to deal with your relationships. So without faith, it is impossible to please God. There are many people who come to church and follow rituals without faith. But if you want God to be on your side, then you must learn to have faith in God. Don't just pray without faith. Don't just give offerings without faith. Don't just attend a department meeting as a ritualistic duty without faith. Have faith in God. Because your faith establishes your relationship with God. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. PMI started with faith in God. I had to believe God beyond my limitations, beyond my inadequacies, beyond my shortcomings, beyond my human faults. I had to lift up my eyes and see God who is going to walk with me through the ages. Men may not believe it, but I don't have faith in men. The environment may not be conducive, but my, big, my God is bigger than my environment. I want to encourage you, have faith in God. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. As the people grow and they become better and they become bigger, sometimes they shift their faith away from God into the size of the church, into the amount of offerings, into the buildings, and they feel strong. But I want to pray that as we cross 25 years, our faith will be stronger in God. May this same God who has begun with us, may our faith be in him. May we continue to please him. May our relationship be intact. Have faith in God. I know people, when they are small, they pray. When they are, they are young, they give offerings and they have faith in God. But as they get a job, as life begins to move forward, they begin to move their faith away from God into things. But this morning, I want to remind us of how we began. Have faith in God. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. The second thing that has guided us is this whole issue about faithfulness. So the first thing has to do with our relationship with God. The second has to do with our service to God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, it says, Let a man so account of us, as of the ministers of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Verse 2, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I pray that all of us, wherever you are in your home, you will stand up and boldly read the scripture. Moreover, moreover, above every other thing you may have, above every other acquisitions of life, above every achievement, the Bible says that it is required. A requirement is mandatory. A requirement is not optional. This is a non-negotiable essential of your relationship and your service. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. In a book called How Children Succeed, the author, Paul Toff, examines the research of neuroscientists, medical doctors, psychologists, educators, and economists to discover the qualities of successful children and ultimate successful adults. He concludes, developing a child's character strengths of grit, self-control, zest, 
social intelligence gratitude optimism and curiosity is the most important intervention in helping children reach their success he says that teaching children that they have the power to grow and improve even in the face of failure enables them to believe that the goals they are working towards are achievable and that this motivates them to work for success we should aim at building mindsets and mental abilities that confront and deal with and overcome negative challenges and environments that many are born into and live in we need to build a character of faithfulness and this requires that a person will face challenges and experience failures and still not give up but rise up and overcome these obstacles as an essential trait of his or her development so when you find somebody who when he's growing up gives up easily you are doing a job and and it's so difficult then you give up and your parents tell you just leave it and go and sit down you see what they are actually doing is that they are destroying an essential trait of success children must be taught to face challenges and to handle difficult tasks when early why because it builds a resilient spirit which they will need to succeed in life the subject of faithfulness clearly assumes that one will have to fight to overcome challenging circumstances and environments you have to learn how to deal with limited resources and sometimes manage difficult relationships in order to achieve an expected or desired goal and objective faithfulness is not measured by the absence of challenges but by the optimistic ability and attitudes to live through and overcome these obstacles in order to achieve a goal so when you find a faithful man he will persist he will experiment he will rethink strategies over and over again he keeps persisting and does not think of giving up and will not stop until he has it right there is a great determination to achieve and that is what drives your actions so let's say that you are a child growing up i remember when we were children maybe used to play a puzzle and in fixing the puzzle it was difficult and then you just throw it away and go and play ludo <laughs> or maybe you have to fix you know those those ruby ruby cubes you have to try and get all the colors on one side and because it was difficult you just threw it away anything that is difficult that comes up your way you just throw it away but people who succeed in life never give up until they succeed if at first you don't succeed try again you don't give up on your life because you failed you don't give up on a on a job because you didn't get it the first time you don't give up on a situation because you faced a difficulty at the first time you must have built a resilience to forge on to press on experiment persist rethink your strategies over and over again you master faithfulness as you persist in trying has it been easy in choco of course not we've had battles we've had confrontations we felt like giving up sometimes there was nobody in church you call for a meeting and you don't even find anybody sometimes the offerings even make you weep but because of a persistent faithful spirit because we don't give up we don't give up on life we don't give up on souls we don't give up on projects we have been accustomed to facing challenges difficult situations and fighting our way through if at first we don't succeed we'll try again why because we must achieve something and that great determination helps us deal with life's challenges to build a better world we need to replace a patchwork of lucky bricks and arbitrary advantages with a society and with a church that grows its people to be faithful we never give up on souls until they come back we never give up until we have prayed through we never give up and we'll go an extra mile to make sure we achieve results the great determination and the bible says that moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful instead of just wishing for luck build a character of faithfulness imagine a character a country where this character is not the exception but it's a cultural trait that is deeply embedded in our students in our scientists in our health workers some countries are going to discover the cure for covid why because even though they try and it doesn't succeed they will persist and they will make sure that they eventually overcome the covid pandemic that is the kind of character god wants to have all of us to have 
can you imagine what will happen to our musicians our sportsmen our farmers our scientists if all the all our culture is shaped by this meaningful work ethics a people who never give up until they achieve a desired goal truly these are the rare breed of men and women who bring positive change to their world they are called the faithful i love stories of people who have risen from challenging and difficult environments and survived through impossible situations i'm sure in ghana we can talk of the story of shatawali we can talk of people like stone boy we can talk of people like kwakesi we can talk of business moguls like despite we can talk of odor rice we can talk of footballers like abedi pele we can even look at some of our graduates who have come from very far from development in the villages who studied under trees with no electricity and food who come into the city and by dint of hard work pass exams enter schools even at an adult age with one shirt and one trousers and survive discrimination in some elite schools yet they pass excellently and progress to the harvards and yields and beat the world's best i'm sure you've all heard of story of ben carson who survived discrimination and became the first neurosurgeon to perform a surgery on those twins listen to somebody like Lionel Messi he says I used to serve tea at a shop to support my football training Lionel Messi how many times has he won the best football of the year but look at how he started selling tea at a shop to support his football training look at the example of Steve Jobs who says I used to sleep on the floor in friends rooms returning empty coke bottles for food and money and getting weekly free meals at a local temple look at the story of oprah winfrey who says i was raped at the age of nine and yet rose against that background and today is an american media proprietor talk show talk show host philanthropist and producer look at bill gates who says i didn't even complete my university education and yet bill gates is consistently ranked today among the world's wealthiest people look at abraham lincoln the 16th president of the united states who says in my childhood days i stitched shoes these and many other people from every conceivable background all over the world have had to overcome pretty harsh and hostile environments in the midst of limited resources as they trod their way to significant achievements and contrary to the idea that many of the acclaimed celebrities we now see are self-made and have no idea of poverty or harsh realities each has a story of triumph over harsh hostile environments and setbacks the path of the faithful is truly paved with a lot of harsh realities choco has not been easy but it's taking a great determination to fight if we start telling you our story 25 years ago it is easy to look at us today and to talk of success but 25 years ago we've had to survive difficulties hostile relationships harsh environments and this is as we study the scriptures we see this essential qualification that stands above all others as a key requirement for anyone to be a worthy vessel of the most high moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful our generation as we cross the 25th anniversary will enjoy a higher standard of life because we don't give up we are not going to shift our faith onto things we are not going to relax and allow circumstances to overcome us we are going to press on and make sure the next generation can have a higher standard of life we are not going to be frustrated by the challenges of limited resources difficult relationships and harsh environments multitudes must still hear the gospel and receive eternal salvation because you are not afraid to press on you are not afraid to go an extra mile deliverance will come to the multitudes because you continue pressing on in fasting because you continue pressing on in prayer because you are now that you are rich and you have food to eat you are not going to throw away the things the foundations of the gospel and rely on your money and your wealth you are still going to believe god you are still going to be faithful you are going to be unfaithful usher 
You are going to be a faithful prayer warrior. You are going to be a faithful cell leader. No matter the position you occupy. Like David, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is a shepherd boy who had nothing. Today he's been made king. But he still says, a day in thy courts is better than 10,000 days outside. I'll rather be a doorkeeper. We are not going to allow prosperity to change us. We will still be faithful. As we cross over 25 years, may the faithful spirit still grip every one of us. May you remember what has brought you this far. And may you forge on to be faithful to the very end. We are not giving up. I want to talk about a story of Isaac in Genesis chapter 26 from verses 1 to 3. The Bible says that there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, and to Jerah. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. You all know the story of Isaac. Isaac is the son of a rich man. His father was the richest man in the whole of the earth. So Abraham was not broke. Therefore, Isaac was not broke. And yet he finds himself in a place of famine. Challenging circumstances. He didn't create the famine. But the famine had hit him. You know, life sometimes deals very harsh blows. That you have nothing and you can't control. You are born in a, a background of illiteracy. You are born in a village where there's no food. You are born in a background of sicknesses. It's a climate that is difficult. You have to learn to be able to rise above it. And to be able to overcome it. The climate is not an excuse to freeze your life. Choco is no reason why we should become chocorites. We are bigger than choco. God said, Jesus Christ said, I am in the world, but I'm not of this world. We may be born in, a, in poverty, but we are not of poverty. We may have suffered discrimination, but we will not allow discrimination to freeze our potentials. I am in this world, but I'm not of the world. Isaac finds himself, through no fault of his, suffering famine. The son of a rich man, he could have said, ah, my father is rich. I'm not going to go into farming. But look at him. He still decides, I will work. So even though he's raised up as a dadaba, when he's going through difficulties, something within him rises up. He doesn't go back to his father to look for handouts. He says, I will work. And so the son of a rich man takes farming and begins to dig wells by himself. It wasn't an easy thing. And the Bible says that in that challenging circumstances, where there is even no food, he decides to plant. You see, in the midst of your limitation, there are things you can do that will break the cycle of poverty. So when it, in farming time, everybody says, I'm keeping what I have just to eat. Somebody says, I'm not going to just eat. I'm going to invest. I'm not just going to look after myself. I'm going to think about my future. And that is one of the things that you need to break. Beyond chocolate, there's a future. Beyond the limitations of the environment, there's a future. We've had to learn how to invest. We've had to learn how to sow. We've learned how to, learn how to, learn how to raise children and teach people how to read and write. Investing and sending people to school. Paying school fees. Why? Because we thought of the future. We're not just thinking of today. We've had to learn how to sacrifice and put away a certain lifestyle and invest money into building a future. We don't just live for the present. We live for the future. Today may not be the way you want it to be. Obviously. We are not where we started. But we are also not where we intend to be. We are still on a journey. And if we continue the principles, we will get there. Sometimes you find somebody who has just started. And then begins to live big and large. And blows away everything that he should have invested. And destroys his future. The fact that you have something today. What about tomorrow? What about when you no longer have the energy? What about when you, a climate comes that you have no control over? Like COVID-19. Nobody budgeted for COVID-19. But all of a sudden, businesses are collapsing. All of a sudden, people are losing jobs. But your investment guarantees a future. It is important you understand. Isaac had been living with the people who had shown a history of animosity towards his father Abraham. Every time his father dug a well, the Philistines fill the well with dust isn't it interesting that you find someone who's trying to do well you think the philistines will be happy that they found somebody in the midst of farming who is coming to dig a well and provide water to change the landscape and to change the environment and yet they were jealous and every time isaac dug a well the philistines filled the well 
and in life not everybody's going to like what you do not everybody's going to encourage you sometimes the good things you do people will pull you down and we've been pulled down so many times but we kept digging the well you dig a well somebody stops it you dig another well you try it it doesn't work you try again why because you want to succeed there's that great determination the history of faithfulness god says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful i pray that in the next journey of our life this faithful spirit the prayer warriors will be faithful the ashes will be faithful the people who pay their tithe will be faithful the people who come to church will still be faithful the people who sweep the floor will be faithful will still be a faithful church why because we want to press on and get to the high calling of god we are not settling down we are not satisfied with the status quo we want to press on and get to the high calling of god so everybody who wants to be faithful you have to learn to deal with these three things number one challenging environment number two limited resources and number three hostile relationships if you can't deal with these things you will not you will be overcome if you start a business you have to deal with it if you marry you'll have to deal with it if you start a church you'll have to deal with it that is the terrain and the interesting thing is that we call isaac or we call god the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob yet god saw isaac being cheated he didn't do anything because the faithfulness of isaac is more important than the deliverance i'll say it again the faithfulness is more important you need to go through it when you go through water he'll be there when you go through fire he'll be there sometimes you go through bad patches and you can't understand many times as a church we've had to ask god why why is this happening to us after all that we are doing we are serving why are these people against us why are enemies risen against us but god says i will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies i will not deliver you from your enemies but i'll bless you in the midst of your enemies enemies will not distract us some people are easily distracted by enemies they will not distract you from your music ministry they will not distract you from becoming a pastor they may mock and laugh at you 25 years ago but today we are not distracted i want to challenge all of you to be very focused i want to pray the faithful spirit upon all of you what you have found to do do it with all your might hold on to it lay hold on eternal life don't give up no matter what you go through people laugh at you they mock you they try to ridicule you but continue it is important that we succeed the first thing like i said is your faith in god the second thing is your faithfulness the third trait that is very important has to do with your heart of gratitude turn your bible to psalm 50 verse 23 psalm 50 verse number 23 and we are going to read the web version very interesting what does it say it says whoever offers the sacrifice of thanksgiving glorifies me and prepares his way so that i will show god's salvation to him so the first thing is your relationship with god faith the second is your service to god your faithfulness that has to deal with your present then your future is going to be guaranteed by a heart of gratitude listen and listen carefully god himself does not condone ingratitude so in the bible one of the groups of people god gives up on are people who forget easily and the people who are ungrateful they can't remember that today god has helped them they can't remember that it is god who has brought them this far as a church may we remember 25 years ago when there was nobody when you were nobody when i was nobody we cannot forget that this is the doing of the lord and so the bible says that whoever offers the sacrifice i like the word is used the sacrifice and i've taught you that the word sacrifice has a blood connotation and a blood imposition it means that life is being poured out so whoever offers the sacrifice of thanksgiving 
Because God expects that at a certain point, your thanksgiving will not just be casual, but your thanksgiving will be something you go to great lengths because you can sit back and look back and remember and say, this is the doing of the Lord. For 25 years, God has heard my prayer. For 25 years, God has favored me. For 25 years, God has kept me alive. You have no idea the battles we've had to fight. You have no idea the all nights we've had to cry. You have no idea the confession of sins and the sacrifices of praise we've had to offer. You've had no idea how many times we've been to God. Every time we gathered, his presence has been with us. Every prayer we've made for 25 years, God has heard. Every sacrifice we've offered, every sin he's forgiven us. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, our enemies would have chewed us. Because they were waiting for us to fail. And so whosoever you went to school, no, 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 no. You got married. You did the wrong thing and even got pregnant, but he forgave you today. You have children. You didn't pay your tithe. He forgave you. You were some way, somehow. You were always not right, but God still tolerated us. You didn't say the right thing. You let people astray. You fought, but God still forgave us. What a God. And so he says, whosoever offers the sacrifice of thanksgiving, this one is thanksgiving. Asida. Yet the Asida Ninka Biama wo, Ethirise, Wune se wo, O Kamafwe, Jesus, O Dimafwe, Messiah. We can look back not too long ago when some of us were in school and we didn't have money. When some of us went through bad experiences and there was nobody there. When we thought we would never rise again. What is going to guarantee our future is a heart of gratitude. I pray and I say, God, do not take your spirit away from me. I may lose everything, but I want to keep a heart of gratitude. I want my faith in God to be intact. I want to continue serving the Lord and be faithful. And I want to enter into my future. With a heart of gratitude. So he says, whosoever offers the sacrifice of thanksgiving glorifies me and prepares his way. Kai. So when you offer that sacrifice of thanksgiving, you are actually clearing the path. If anything has blocked the presence of God from coming into your life, from coming into your church, because you are saying you haven't forgotten that he who began a good work in you is still working with you and that this is not the end of the journey. He says you are preparing the way into your future so that he will show you his salvation. The salvation of the Lord is going to be with powerhouse because today after 25 years, we can remember. We can remember. 25 years ago, I had three very small tiny children 25 years ago i couldn't even afford dresses to buy 25 years ago i didn't have a car 25 years ago a whole church service would even have under COVID people like that here i was naked i was destitute i was lonely i didn't even have friends i was not on tv i was not on radio nobody invited me anywhere People looked at me and shunned powerhouse. I can remember. I can remember our first offerings. Today we can take an offering and thank God. But I can remember when we were totally in debt, day in, day out. And the Bible says that whoever can reflect and remember and offer a sacrifice of a bar for dear. I for dear a muy drew. You see, you, 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 you sacrifice and say thank you. It is easy for people to buy a mobile phone for their girlfriend on their birthdays. It is easy for somebody to buy a car for somebody on his birthday. It is easy for somebody to give money and donate it to a political party. It is easy for somebody to buy a first class ticket for your children to travel. But when it comes to God, I want to plead with you. I have a personal vow. I will never give to a man what I cannot give to God. And I'll always give to God beyond any man. If you can easily drop a mobile phone and get a thank you from a man, remember the one who can guarantee things for you that nobody can guarantee. You know, I tell people, 
Who can give me life? Who can give me peace? Who can give me good children? Who can give me health? There are things that no human being can give. And I remember. And I reflect. Whosoever offers the sacrifice of thanksgiving glorifies me. And prepares the way. So that I will continually show him my salvation. Our future is being guaranteed because we can remember as a church and come back and say, Papi, you better was. You better was. Some of us lost our parents when we were young. You didn't go to school, but God didn't leave you. They thought that was the end of your life. Some of you started a business, somebody ripped you off. You thought that was the end. But God has kept you alive. As a church, we can count our blessings and name them one by one. This is a sacred moment. Whosoever offers the sacrifice of thanksgiving, honors me and prepares his way. You see, he, doesn't pre- he prepares his way. At this point, it's no longer a congregational thing. He prepares his way. So everybody at a certain point, you've got to sit down and reflect. It's easy today to sit in a restaurant and just spend how much on food. It's very easy. It's very easy to buy another car, buy another house. But look at how the gospel started. Because some people sold their houses and gave thanks to God. You see, we must be a generation who honors God. The future we are entering into in the next, year, the, next, the next years, I'm not scared because my relationship, my faith with God, my faithful service, and my heart of gratitude, three things that guarantee a future. Three things that will take you into a future that nobody can stop. It is not what you are today. It is what you will be in the next 20 years. What you have today, we see. Who you are today, we know. What we have become today, everybody can see. But where will we be in the next 20 years? How will we be? I can guarantee. Because who sac- whoever offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving glorifies me. Let's end with Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 9. You know, there are three reasons to give. And we are just ending. Number one, you give us a duty. You give your tithe in a legal relationship. You give because it's expected of you. Number two, you give as a seed investment to meet a need for protection, for deliverance, to avert judgment. Number three, you give to bless and to honor. When you don't need anything, you just give to the Lord. We are not here today because we need anything. We are not giving a seed offering because we are expecting a wedding or a, a marriage or an open door. Everywhere people have just given to honor the Lord and glorify God. Amazing. This is the offering Abraham gave. This is the offering Solomon gave. This is the offering David gave. When you don't have anything and you just come, Papi, me bedawasi. Papi, ye bedawasi. Papi, ye bedawasi. Why? We don't need it. We are just coming to bless you, Lord. And so in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9, it says, honor the Lord. This is not give an offering or give a seed. You take the initiative, honor the Lord with thy substance. With thy substance. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. Just honor him. 25 years. I stand amazed in the presence of God. Amazed. God has watched and protected and preserved and fed me in ways beyond I cannot tell. I cannot tell it all. Bononye, this church is where we are, not because there's any individual in the church, but God, but Jehovah. So we stand in a sacred time to honor him. May we honor the Lord. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. 
the verse 10 is contingent upon verse 9 but the verse 10 is not even our focus no but he says if we do it something will happen to us because when god you honor god he honors you so i come to give him honor i come to say thank you i come to say i can remember 25 years ago how old was i in my early 30s young man who is about to step into today a lot of people who are that age cannot even step out because it, it takes more than your background and your intellect and your education and your preaching abilities it takes god helping you it takes bringing god into your life because you honor him he will honor you today if there's any honor upon us if powerhouse is mentioned anywhere by the grace of god we have people in australia listening to us this morning we have people in china all over europe and americas people are tuned in live listening to me from toko only god can take toko and make it global when we didn't even have anything we have fed multitudes literally sent over 500 people to school paid education we give god honor you know if you're a beneficiary of this church charlie sometimes you just got to sit down and thank and think and thank god and thank god because we haven't survived because your pastor went to school you haven't survived because your pastor is tall and handsome and thick we've only survived by the grace of god i'm a beneficiary of grace i know i know pa and it is this grace that has brought us this far and so we come to honor the lord wherever you are in your home listening watching i want you to dedicate your life to god i've shared with you three things number one your relationship with god your faith number two your service to god your faithfulness and number three your heart of gratitude which guarantees your future and so in a calm moment we want to bow down our heads and want to talk to the father in heaven I know you want to thank God 25 years. You were not here when it started. But thank God you've joined. You are also important. You've come to join to be faithful. You've come to join to serve the Lord and to continue. You've come in faith, building your relationship with God. You want to guarantee that you will cross into the future with a heart of gratitude. What is it that we have that we did not receive? And if we receive it, why do we boast? We give back to you. David said, of thine own do we give back to thee. I give him my life. I give him my soul. I give him my heart. I give him my time. I give him my resources. Because he gave it to me. If I have life, life is not given by man. It is given by God. And so we say thank you for life. Thank you God. Thank you Father thank you jesus sometimes god has sent strangers our way when we're in difficulty and didn't know when to turn when nobody around us had god will bring a stranger from afar who will meet needs who will supply who has done it all god who has kept you alive god who has bound your broken heart god who has healed your diseases god who has cleansed you from your iniquities and sins god who has made sure that your past mistakes hasn't caught up with you god god and so today father if we are here it is just to honor you it is to give you the highest respect you deserve it above any human vessel you are god the songwriter says you are god 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 when i look at the mountains i look at the valley i look at the sea oh my lord you are god can you look around you can you see god i don't see goliath i have faith in a god who's bigger 
have faith in a God who's stronger. I have faith in a God who's bigger than the devil. That's my faith. I have faith in a God who collects the things that be not as though they are. I have faith in a God who quickeneth the dead. I have faith in a God who's bigger than my background. Who's bigger than every challenge. Who's bigger than every situation. My faith in God. My relationship must please him. And so, Father, take my life and let it please you. Make that prayer this morning. As we close, ask God, take my life. Take my moments. Take my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. You want to pray and say, that, Father, that I shall be faithful. Whatever has been entrusted in my care, let nothing take it away from me. Whatever you have given to me, the ministry of reconciliation, I shall be faithful. I shall not be too big to serve. I shall honor you with my service. I shall honor you with my faith. I shall honor you with my service. And I shall honor you with my substance. And so, Father, receive your thanksgiving. Receive your praises. Receive your worship. For you are God. Just rise up on your feet. Lift up your hands. Let's just sing a, a song of worship. Let's just lift up our hands. And in gratitude, just worship the Lord. Say things to him that only he deserves it. Only you deserve it. Only you deserve the glory. Only you deserve the worship. Only you deserve our highest praise. And so we come to you. We give it all unto you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There is none that can be compared unto you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 25 years. It is you, Lord. You have done it. 25 years. You have watched over me. You have watched us as a church. You have preserved us. 25 years, Lord. It is your doing. It is your doing. It is your doing. It is your doing. No one can worship you for me. Here is my Thank you, Lord Jesus. All of my worship. Sing it again, you Lord, you are worthy. Receive my worship. All of my worship. All of my worship. Here is my worship. Here is my worship. All of my worship. For you, Lord, you are worthy. Come on, everybody. Receive my you, worship. Lord, worthy of oh, and no one can worship you for me. All the things you've done for me, come on. For all the things you've done for me. And no one can worship you for me. And no one can worship you for me. Sing it again. You, Lord, you are worthy. Lift up your hands wherever you are. You, Lord, you are worthy. No one can worship you. And no one can worship you for me. For all the things you have done. Come on, everybody. For all the things you've done for me. And no one can worship you for me. And no one can worship you for me. Here is my worship. Lift up your hands and declare. Here is my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Here is my worship. Here is my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. For you, Lord. You, Lord, you are worthy. Come on, let's declare it. And no one can worship you for me. Oh, for all the things you've done, oh God. For all the things you've done for me. And no one can worship you, oh God. 
and no one can worship you for me. Lift up your hands. Let's declare here is my worship. Here is my worship. All of my worship. Receive it. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Here is my worship. Here is my worship. All of it. All of my worship. Receive my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Just keep playing instrumentally. Just keep playing. Lift up your hands, everybody. Our God is a miracle God. When he speaks, he works signs and wonders. And there is nothing too hard for him. All of us in PMI, today we bow down and worship you, Father. And we declare that let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Even before PMI was conceived, you are. And yes, you do miracles and no one can deny. You give sight to the blind. You raise the dead. And you command light out of darkness. You call for things that be not. And they are. At the mention of your name, Father, every knee must bow. I see you everywhere, touching every life and making all things well. For 25 years, Father, you have nurtured and fed us. You have fed us with your word. You have placed us in a loving church family of the Powerhouse Ministries International. And you have beautified us with your presence daily. I thank you for the fellowship of the brethren. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the work you have done in our midst. We give you thanks for your love and your faithfulness. When we gather, you are in our midst. When we call on your name, you answer. And you show us great and mighty deeds. For 25 years, you have listened to countless prayers of adoration. Countless prayers of confession. Thanksgiving and supplication. For 25 years, you have made us witnesses of your word and deed in this community and around the world. You have accepted our humble sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving. You have listened to our confession of sins and forgiven our sins. You have sent your Holy Spirit to heal and comfort our hurts, our sorrows, our infirmities, and our losses. The things you have done for us, no one can remember it all and recount it. And if we were to speak and tell of them, there will be too many to declare. But today we gather and we say be glorified. Be glorified in PMI. Be glorified in our lives. Be glorified in our families. Be glorified in our businesses. Everything we do, be glorified. Make PMI a delightsome land. A place of your delight in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We enter into our harvest. We enter into our future. A future that is bigger. That is better. That is greater. That is glorious and that is more global. Father, let your love be our motivation and let your wisdom be our guide in all our endeavors. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together, put your hands together. We are now going to take our Thanksgiving offering. As many of you as want to honor the Lord, you can just come and drop it at the altar and just say thank you this is to honor you lord in jesus name yes lord be honored be glorified your people come to offer willingly your people come to say thank you you are worthy oh father you deserve all our praise you deserve all our thanksgiving if it had not been for the lord on our side where would we be if it had not been for you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No one can worship you for me. Receive your worship. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Our sacrifices of thanksgiving to honor you. 
our sacrifices of thanksgiving to honor you to honor you lord just to honor you lord just to honor you lord thank you lord jesus thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you thank you lord thank you jesus is alice here alice is not here okay natasha come come and give us just sing a song before we close quickly are you happy you came to church today are you happy you are are you happy you are, you are part of the blessed generation i declare that our future is bigger our future is brighter our future is better we give thanks to the lord who has watched over us and brought us this far in jesus mighty name amen oh, i overcame hallelujah he won the victory hallelujah he said it's finished no Hallelujah. Pastor Ben, I thank you very much for these great teachings. Indeed, faith establishes our relationship with God. I want to encourage you, have faith in God. I pray that in addition to having faith in God, you will also increase, be faithful in your service to God. Don't get distracted. Stay focused towards the service of God. Hallelujah. Together with a heart of gratitude, we'll continue to say thank you to our Father, who is in heaven. Remember, grow your relationship with God. Grow your faithfulness towards the service of God and increase your honor to God. Amen. We thank you for joining us this morning. We are grateful, each one of you that has come this far with us. We want to say thank you to everyone that has been a part of the PMI story. May our God continue to strengthen you for the rest of the PMI journey. Remember, we stream live every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. on Facebook, and we are also live on CTFM Sundays at 7 a.m. Tune in, grow your knowledge, spirituality, and wisdom by the Rima word that comes your way. It's been a blessing worshiping with you. Remember, 
keep your faith alive. Our faith is an overcoming faith. But don't log off yet. The choir will minister a few songs to us before we finally say bye to you. God bless each one of you. up your name I will lift 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 up your name 